How's it going everybody, it's Stas here, and in this video we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be doing a trading update, talking about what I did today in the markets, as well as some stocks and ETFs that I'm watching and looking to trade right now in the middle of December of 2019. And as you guys read in the title, we're also talking about Facebook stock in particular, whether or not I think this could be a short-term dip buy, and and we're going to be breaking down UGAS, natural gas, and degas to see how those ETNs and uh, the uh, the future of natural gas performed today. So if you guys enjoy this video, find any value from this video, feel free to go down below, hit that like button, consider subscribing if you want to see further content for me, and if you want to be further connected with our community, the Strive Smart community, the Discord group chats linked down below, as well as that good old Facebook group. So let's get into it right now talking about the S&P as always with five minutes left this thing is up a whopping 22 points today up 0.7 percent very very strong day out there today guys in these markets and if we zoom in a bit to the daily chart you can see the the most of the move really the majority of the move um, came from the pre-market gap up right you guys can see 3169 is where we closed on Friday we had um um, big gap up in the futures pre-market, obviously heading into the market as well. And that pop-up was about 0.7% from, you know, this peak here, uh, or rather from the bottom here where we closed on Friday up here to the peak. And again, you can see from that point, we were just coasting for the rest of the day up until now where we are seeing a bit of a pullback. So all-time high here in the S&P, again, up 0.75% at this time. And if we look on the hourly chart, we can see that it's pulling down a little bit, just like we saw in that daily chart. We may pull down and see a bit of a retracement down to that EMA. As you guys can see, we're probably going to close above that, so that's a level I'll be watching tomorrow. If we hold that EMA on the hourly chart, we could expect higher highs for the S&P, in my opinion, as that will be a higher low, so the uptrend in that case will be you know, steady. Let's say we break that EMA. Who knows? We may be selling off to about 3170 and at that point I'd be looking to see if we hold that old resistance as a new support so overall that's what the S&P is looking like right now guys if we go over here to the NASDAQ this thing's up 1% up $84.50 right now and this also hit yep you guessed it an all time high today at 86 17.5 this is crazy guys the NASDAQ is getting closer and closer to a $10,000 NASDAQ. Do you guys think we'll hit that within the next year or two? That's pretty lofty. I don't know. Probably not. We might see a recession before we hit that, but let me know down below in the comments, when do you think we'll hit a $10,000 NASDAQ? I'd love to know your comments and thoughts about that. And if we go here, Five day, five minute on the NASDAQ. You can see most of the move came, you know, over the uh, the nighttime, right? Pre market, heading into the session today. And then we really saw a big pop and then a coast for the rest of the day, ever since around 10 30 a.m. Eastern Standard, which is one hour into the market. So for the past six, seven hours, guys, we've just been coasting, hit that all time high. Now we're pulling down. So on the five day, five minute, we may be pulling down here to that 180 SMA on the NASDAQ. That could be a point in time where, hey, I might buy one of these market ETFs that I track all the time that track the NASDAQ, like TQQQ, which goes up whenever the NASDAQ is going up at a 3x rate. So these are some options, you know, that I'm going to be looking at here if the NASDAQ does end up dipping and holding that 180 SMA level that we're talking about, right? So the Dow Jones here up 0.35%, not as good of a day as the S&P and the NASDAQ but still pretty good, up 100 points, 0.35% here. And you can see this thing's actually pulling down um, a bit further here than the S&P and the NASDAQ. You saw those two, they were kind of coasting. They're dipping a little bit here towards the end of the market. But this thing popped up in terms of the Dow. It peaked at about 10.30 a.m. Eastern here at 28.337, hit that all-time high. And we actually have seen a, an aggressive dump since then. We didn't really get a coast period, a coasting period. Um, we just really jumped off 
off of a cliff from that point. But the uptrend still holding, guys. We're still holding a higher low technically here above that 180 SMA. So I'd watch and see if this is a level um, the Dow holds into tomorrow's session. And one way we'll know that is if we wake up in the morning and the futures are up. Let's say the Dow Jones futures are up another half a percent or maybe 0.3 percent. There go the markets. Let's say, you know, the Dow is up 0.3. That could be a, an indication that we're doing something like that heading into tomorrow's session. And that will be, as you guys probably guessed it, the continuation of the uptrend. So overall, those are kind of my thoughts here on the market, a technical breakdown. Um, you know, these markets, they're just they are just pushing, guys. Phase one deal was on Friday, that little deal um, that China and, uh, you know, the U.S. came to where Trump ended up pushing back those tariffs or not having them go into effect, the ones that were supposed to go into effect on the 15th. And ever since then, you know, the, these past two, three days, the markets have been red hot again. So will this continue? I don't know. But we'll continue to track it here on this channel. And I'd love to know, again, what you guys have to think about that down below in the comments. So let's talk about very quickly what I did today in terms of my trading. So you guys know that I held two stocks over the weekend at V and PayPal. And at V was kind of flat today. It did do well um, in the beginning of the day. If we go to that one day, one minute, you guys can see, you know, we gapped up a bit aggressively here, you know, pre-market. We were up to about 59.30, but from there we kind of, you know, flattened out and ended up closing the day, you know, minus four cents, minus, uh, you know, 0.07%. So I personally didn't buy any more at V today and I didn't sell any at V. I'm strictly holding my position here. So in terms of that, nothing really has changed. And PayPal on the flip side is one that I ended up buying a little bit more of today. And if you guys remember PayPal, I got in at 104.30 right down here, right? We talked about it and called it out on this channel, ended up locking in profits on a little bit of my position over the weekend or rather on Friday, just to be a little bit safe over the weekend. And I told you guys, if it were to break this level at 108, 1 9 I'm looking to add more and uh, I did exactly that I added a little bit more on this break now I'm looking to sell out um, at around 112 as that is the next resistance and that's where I'm looking to honestly see PayPal go here and volumes kicking up you know, there's obviously a lot of buyers coming in here on this break, and that's good because momentum, it seems like it's going to push us up there. So where I bought in exactly, guys, really it was in the morning. Once we got this massive gap up, running up a little bit, you know, here into the 109s, I just bought a little bit um, in this area, right? So, you know, average cost now, it got bumped up a bit. I'm probably at around 105 something, 106, right around there. And if I end up selling at 112, guys, I can make around 5-6% on this position. So overall, no day trading for me today, guys. Um, again, a lot of this, this market move um, came in pre-market, so I couldn't really trade these market ETFs that I typically trade, but I am eyeing them up for tomorrow, like I mentioned earlier. So that's really it. Two swing trades I'm involved with right now. There's a couple of other ones that we'll talk about here in a couple of minutes that I'm keeping my eyes on to buy literally this week. I'm really interested in buying these. So let's talk about you guys before we talk about those stocks that I'm interested in buying. So you guys today guys saw a pretty strong move of around 6% at the close about three minutes ago up 0.51 or rather 51 cents. I don't know why I said 0.51. 51 cents in the green today for you guys, but it's still downtrending, guys. I've been getting questions about this. It's still downtrending, although it has been doing quite well over the past couple of days, and we literally called this out on the channel, right? After that big dump, that natural gas saw on Sunday, last Sunday, right? Massive dump. We talked about how U gas was extremely oversold and natural gas was extremely oversold. And the last time it did that, it saw a recovery period. So I was looking to see if it would do that same thing. And it ended up doing the same thing. Recovery period from 765, now up to that 50 SMA at around nine bucks. Now is the thing, or the, 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 the tricky thing now is what's going to happen here, right? Are we 
going to get rejected yet again, um, and then drop in that, the, the prices of natural gas drop, which would push degas up, that could end up happening, guys. Let's be honest. You know, the mild weather, a lot of production of natural gas now. We've been talking about this. The reports have been backing up the low demand here. You know, if we do get a rejection under this 50 SMA tomorrow, natural gas does end up, you know, seeing a bit of a dump. This is setting up beautifully for a degas, you know, entry, right? Because if we go to degas, you know, we are holding that 150 level right now as a support, right? We're holding that 150 level as a support. And if we end up holding that to maybe go back up to the 160 level, that could be the confirmation we need and that dump from natural gas to go along on D gas. But the one thing is that I just saw now, and let me point it out to you guys um, to get a better picture of, you know, we can see that the downtrend on natural gas is breaking, although the downtrend on U gas isn't breaking quite yet. So that is a good short-term sign um, here for the natural gas bulls out there. We could potentially fill up maybe to, I'd say, the next level I'm looking at here in terms of resistance, maybe 240, maybe 245. These are some levels we can go to here in the short term. But if I'm trading you guys, guys, I want to see the bullish break there. Although, even though, you know, we're seeing it already in natural gas, I still want to see the pop here um, before potentially getting into you gas. So overall, those are kind of some thoughts here around you gas, natural gas, D gas. The truth is, guys, I'm keeping my eyes on the weather every single day. I'm looking at it, how things are, you know, changing because we all know the weather changes very rapidly, you know, across the days and across the weeks. And I'm also keeping an eye on the natural gas reports that come out every single Thursday at 1030 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So let's crack down on some other stocks very quickly before I end off this video, guys. And we have something to talk about here that I'm interested in buying, like you read in the title. So Tesla is one of those, but I missed the boat. So I'm looking to see a pull down here in Tesla to potentially enter. And guys, this thing is parabolic right now. This thing is continuing the rally. We broke 360 and it seems like we are going to get to 390. Like I mentioned in my video on Friday, I made a video titled Tesla to 390 and that literally ended up happening right now. This is the move that I was talking about. And this is another situation where I missed my own call out. Oh my goodness, guys. Another one of those times where I missed my own call out. I call it out. I make a video about it and I don't enter it. Oh my goodness. It's one of those guys, but I'm still looking to enter into it on a pull down. If we get uh, an extensive pull down here down to maybe 370 again, I'm not sure if we'll get it, but we have to keep some hope here. At least, you know, I'm keeping some hope here for myself. You know, if we get that, I'm looking to get into Tesla, right? So this is one that I'm looking to buy strictly on the momentum because as a stock breaks a resistance, guys, you can see a lot of, you know, for some of these stocks like PayPal, we saw, we obviously see it in Tesla here. You know, when we break a resistance like that, a lot of buyers come in pushing that momentum, right? That's what we're seeing here. So I'd like to buy into some weakness, short-term weakness into the momentum, um, you know, because I see potential in that. So if we were to pull down, test that EMA, that's some short-term weakness, but the momentum is still up due to that massive break above 360. So Tesla, I'm watching that one. We kind of already touched on at V here a little bit. Um, you know, this one, I'm still holding it right. You know, like I mentioned earlier, and I do plan on holding this one up until around 60 bucks. That's where I'm looking to offload some shares and into the low 60s too, right? 61, 50, 62. That's where I eventually want to get completely out of the at V position. But short term here, guys, you know, this thing look lo looks like it wants to pull down to around 5780, maybe even 58 bucks flat to retest that support from Friday and that 50 SMA on this hourly chart. So for ATV, that's what I'm looking at. If we hold that level, that's where I probably will add um, a little bit more to my ATV swing trade here, ticker symbol ATVI. We already talked about PayPal, but this is obviously one that I'm looking to add more in. No need to go over that one more um, in depth here. Netflix, and oh my goodness, guys, I almost forgot to talk about Facebook. We'll get, we'll get into that one after Netflix, but Netflix 
Netflix here, you know, we'll pull up that four hour chart, saw a beating from 316, that level of resistance that we uh, struggled above in the middle of October. We tested it again here towards the end of November, failed, pulled down, but we held that 180 SMA at a higher low, which is a positive sign in my opinion. Now you guys can see on the chart we're, you know, breaking above that uh, 50 SMA and we're looking like it's continuing, uh, you know, it's, it's continuing the uptrend, right? So that's a pretty good sign here on Netflix. So ultimately, guys, this is an entry point that I'm looking at around 305 to 306. So from there up to around $317. That does offer around a 4.24% profit potential. And guys, that's looking pretty good, especially since it's already confirmed the higher low. It looks like it's recovering. So it's definitely worth watching here, um, in my opinion. And that's also kind of the situation that Facebook is in. If you guys have been watching Facebook and keeping up with what's happened um, with the company in the news recently, I'm looking at this little uh, you know, note that I have here. Facebook dropped 4% on Thursday, actually, on report that the FTC might block its plans to merge WhatsApp, Instagram, and other apps. So, you know, regulation, all this stuff, you know, Facebook versus the government, whenever something like that happens, um, typically Facebook sees a short-term sell-off, right? And what does that do? You know, sure, if you're a long-term investor, you might add some long-term shares, or if you're a swing trader, you might add a little swing position. So you guys can see from 203 down to 193, that opened up 5% uh, of profit. And just on this five-day, five-minute chart, you guys can see we are reversing based on today's action, but we do have a massive but bearish signal here. So there must be some after hours news right now that I do not know about. Let's take a look at this. Um... Facebook's hearing or hearing Facebook's Instagram. Um, okay, I don't know why this is dumping, but I'm sure one of you guys, at least one of you guys watching knows. So drop a comment down below. Let me know what happened here. Um, but either way, with this drop, even with this drop, um, you know, Facebook's breaking out on the five day, five minute. And on the hourly chart, you guys can see, you know, the, the massive pull down and the strong recovery here. So is Facebook a dip buy? Um, based on the four hour chart, it seems like it's tuning up to be. But now with this after hour sell off that I literally just saw, that means we're going to be getting rejected under that 50 SMA if this sell off holds into tomorrow's session. So, you know, ultimately ultimately I need to see at least a break above um, 199 before I enter into Facebook and from there 199 200 bucks up to 205, that's the range that I'm looking um, to swing trade Facebook ticker symbol F B. So two more very quickly here, guys. Shopify is another one that did very well today, up $8, up 2%. Um, and it seems like 380, even 385 seemed to be a dip buy here after hours. Um, you know, on Friday, if you were to buy this on Friday, swing over the weekend, you would have done very, very well. So at this point, it seems like Shopify is not looking to cool off. Um, it seems like it's shooting straight for 400 bucks, 410 So maybe if we get a little mini pullback here tomorrow, the next day, I could enter there to hold it to 400. That's something that I'm thinking about here for Shopify. Neo stocks, another one that did pretty well today, up nine cents here, up 3.77%. And it seems like it's holding 240 and successfully continuing above um, that $2.40 level of support, which is a good sign. So at this point, I'm looking to see if it breaks ultimately um, that level of resistance from a couple of days ago, which was at around 250, guys. So 250 to 270, that's the range I'm looking um, to trade NEO at. So that's pretty much it for this video. A couple stocks I'm watching, market breakdown, things to keep an eye out on, um, you know, technical breakdowns. Let me know what you guys thought about this video down below in the comments section. And if you haven't already, why haven't you subscribed to the channel? Go down below, hit that red button. And also, while you're at it, you might as well join the Discord group chat and the Facebook group. And if you want free money, there's a week Webull link down below where if you sign up to Webull, deposit 100 bucks into your account, you actually get two free stocks. One is valued up to 1400 bucks, and the other one I believe is valued up to 500 bucks. So you can literally put in 100 bucks and you get two free stocks.
box for really nothing, really just putting 100 bucks in. So that link is down below. I'll catch you all in the next video. Hope you all had a great day. Hope you all have a great rest of your evening. Peace out.